Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at my favorite knives uh, purchased this year. Tactile Knives comes out with the long-awaited Richard Rogers collaboration, and, uh, and then we're going to take a look at what we're giving away for the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. All coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Black Hole Rainbow, an individual who I don't think knows me very well. Uh, They commented on the shower knife short. They said, how frightened of the world can you get? How frightened of the world can you get? And actually, I read that, and for some reason, I heard it in Greta Thunberg's voice, and it made me laugh. And then I started thinking of the Greta Thunberg Tiger King meme that my brother's been sending me that makes me crack up. And uh, so I liked I liked the comment for that reason. Obviously, Black Hole Rainbow uh, doesn't know me, doesn't know the some the, the gist of some of the stuff we cover here, and so thinks that a shower knife is absurd. Uh, but to answer your question actually answer your question black hole rainbow i'd have to say that there are horrors around every corner that defy belief and it's mere luck that you don't run face to face with them on a daily basis and then that gets you starting to believe well maybe those horrors don't really exist maybe i shouldn't be so frightened of the world until one day one of those horrors presses its case and aims its foul wrath at you and in that moment You're in the shower. What are you going to do? I mean, I'm just saying. All right, enough said. Let's get to a pocket check. Today and actually a number of days this week, I was carrying an old Emerson favorite that I just have not carried in a long time. And that is the Peace Arc, this beautiful, uh, just a beautiful work of tactical modern knife art, if we're going to say that. Uh, I know maybe some of you are balking. You're like, well, that's an Emerson. And a lot of people aren't crazy about Emersons, uh, but I know a lot of you are. And uh, I can remember buying this. I remember being at a barbecue. Uh, It was a Bolivian barbecue and we were eating um, beef hearts. Uh, and man, it is really good the way the Bolivians do it. Anyway, I remember uh, getting a notification from uh, one of my favorite knife purveyors that this was on sale. And of course, I jumped on it uh, with with a mouthful of beef heart. Um, and ever since then, this has been one of my favorite Emersons. I love the Hawkbill blade. A very welcome shape in this format with the wave and uh, with the with the tactical nature of it. Also, um, Ernest Emerson has a rich past in Filipino martial arts and other kind of martial arts. And in Filipino martial arts, you see that downward uh, curved hawk bill in the ganunting. So to me, this was a pocket ganunting uh, that I had to have. Uh, plus, it's chisel ground, truly chisel ground, uh, meaning the edge here. Sorry for the schmutz on the blade. I should have, I should have dolled this up for you. But uh, the edge itself is chisel uh, ground. So that's just one edge going down to that cutting edge. And then when you flip it over, there's no cutting bevel on the other side. But alack, there is no other bevel at all. It is a flat chisel grind. And I got to say, man, flat chisel grinds get so incredibly sharp, even though that the main bevel on the front looks obtuse. It is so sharp. Now, my one beef with Emerson's and how they do a their chisel edge and overall their chisel bevel is that they have it dressed? Uh, they have it. They have it dressed so that you see the bevel on the uh, show side. Uh, but that is only ideal for left-handed users, because with that chisel shape, uh, you want this flat side to be against your work. Whatever, whatever you're cutting, you want this to be on the flat side on the on the work piece, and you want this to be gently. Uh, very sharply uh, chiseling or cutting away uh, with that chisel edge, whatever it is you're, you're doing. 
Uh, but they have it reversed here just for looks. And I actually asked uh, Ernest Emerson when he was on the show and he, yeah, he, he, he's fessed up without any hesitation. Oh yeah. I have it so that it looks good like that. And I was like, Oh, that's interesting. But to me, I, I just kind of wish they had it on the other side. Now, some places, some aftermarket places like tactical elements, uh, they have offered CQC sevens, I believe, uh, with the with the bevel on the right hand side, the proper side for a righty. Um, but it's not a normal thing for Memerson. So that's always been something that's stuck in my craw a bit. But all in all, I love this knife. I love that wicked blade shape. Uh, I put a, an MXG gear clip on it. Uh, the, the clip placement is audaciously low on the handle. I mean, it is like top heavy. There's so much hanging out there if you just use the standard clip. Uh, so I got the old MXG gear clip on there. This thing is awesome. The action is superbly glassy. It, there's no fall shutness about this at all this is 100 manual and it feels so good it's so smooth and like all of my emersons uh was a problem child went through a difficult adolescence uh but finally broke in so uh, i know a lot of people this day and age do not want to go through that but there's something about the break-in of an emerson that uh you know really tests your metal and uh i think i think i have come through with uh with flying colors you know just seeing all the Emersons that have come through my hands that have have left, uh, you know, well, well adjusted uh, folding knives. OK, next up uh, in my hand, in my pocket today was the Venom Jack, the Jack Wolf Knives, December 2022 release. Uh, probably the perfect Jack Wolf knife, though. I say that every time um, this one uh, with that big, broad Warncliffe blade fully flat ground with that very deliberate downward raking of the edge and lowering of the tip really um, makes this an efficient cutter, an efficient uh, pull cutter and, you know, tip, tip knife, everything about this uh, with that downward raking edge and uh, that point so low just screams utility. Uh, I used this the day I got it as a steak knife because I, I remember I came home from work. It was on a Friday that I got it, uh, pulled it out of the case. We're going out for dinner, dropped it in my pocket. Uh, and this was my steak knife. And though uh, it's not a shape I prefer for a steak knife, uh, you know, I'd like a trailing point for that. Um, I was careful not to drag the tip on the porcelain plate too much, but this was my steak knife. And man, it was awesome and impressive. You know, you know, you always get the waiter's eye when you pull out a nice knife. Oh. Uh, and this one came to me. Thank you, Ben Belkin. Uh, this one came to me in this beautiful blue fat carbon. I can't remember the name of this. I think it's like Arctic blue car camo carbon fiber or something or other. I got to look it up. Uh, these gorgeous carbon fibers. Uh, the names confound me after a while. They're all kind of, um, you know, descriptive. So I'm going to call this uh blue blue camo marble ripple and a really great knife I, I i think that this um trapper shaped handle is a really really comfortable shape we've we've uh we've seen this journey through ergonomics with the uh, jack wolf knives because um they are all mercifully single bladed slip joints i say mercifully i love multi-bladed slip joints too but i say mercifully because each one of these knives we are able to feel the full ergonomics of the handle because we don't have the spine of a secondary blade obscuring the contours so uh this one just feels great and with that little uh downward scoop at the pommel of this handle that further uh pushes the tip down making this an even more efficient cutter than just the blade and the angle of the blade uh, cutting edge uh, will allow for so awesome knife love that love that thing and of course it's got a beautiful leather pocket slip that's breaking in speaking of beautiful uh, I had on my uh, three o'clock position uh, the the hog tooth ruffian this is this has been my go-to EDC uh, fixed blade love this thing it's on the heavier and longer side but it carries so so nicely. I think it's the rounded pommel, the and the perfect sheath. Um, this thing just carries really really nicely. Now it'll be interesting to see 
what it's like come summertime. I might opt not to carry this uh, with the lighter garments and such. But right now for winter, this is the bomb. I love this thing. 154 cm deep hollow grind uh, ground blade um, and uh, micarta handle scales with blue. Love this thing. Um, I've gotten a lot of comments on my short about how I carry fixed blade knives. Uh, that That is the most viewed video that I've ever done. It's a short. It's got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of views. And it's gotten so many comments. This is, and my favorite is, don't bring a gun to a, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Or, oh, that's simple. I just pull out my 45. And, um, you know, my reaction to that is, well, I'm, I, I, I'm not saying that guns don't exist and that I don't like them and that I don't have them. I'm just saying, hey, look at these knives, <laughs> you know. So it's just kind of funny. Oh, yeah? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. I say you bring both and multiples. All right, so this is what I had on me today uh, just for, I had no emotional support knife um, on me today, and that was just fine. I let the Emerson take that uh, duty. So I had the Emerson P Sark. Also, check out the Emerson Sark. Uh, Sark stands for Survival and Rescue Knife, I believe. Or no, Search and Rescue Knife. And the P Sark is Police Search and Rescue. So the, the police model has that very sharp tip and the regular Sark model has a rounded off tip. Uh, and sometimes you'll see like a seatbelt cutter groove uh, in, the, in the spine also. Very ugly, uh, but cool purpose-driven tool, unlike the P-Sark, which is just gorgeous. Uh, and then I had the Jack Wolf Knives, um, Venom Jack, the new, the new one. And then, of course, the Hog Tooth Ruffian love this knife uh and uh all things hogtooth as a matter of fact he's got beanies and baseball hats on his website i'm gonna go get one of those probably baseball hat because i wear it more year round and i'm just gonna show off what a nerd and enthusiast i am uh with with one of those okay uh next up i i wanted to uh talk about the gentleman junkie knife giveaway which is tomorrow it's been delayed uh, due to uh, travel and other obligations on my part and Jim's part. And so uh, uh, we will be giving away the knife tomorrow, which is uh, December 22nd uh, uh, of December Thursday. <laughs> that was awkward. We're giving away this beautiful QSP Locust. This knife is really cool. Here it comes with a... Uh, sort of birth card or it's not a birth card it's a um a specs card there it has a little drawing and measurements kind of cool uh and then here's the knife ensconced in velvet uh it is a micarta um uh, micarta d2 oh, i'm sorry micarta and vg10 uh flipper on bearings uh that handle is very evocative of a locust this is called the locust you can see the segments in its thorax and that upward uh, turning tail there, uh, just like the real deal. And then look at that beautiful worn cliff blade. That's, I think this is nearly four inches. One, two, three. It's three and three quarters inches long. Nice big long blade. Uh, very comfortable in hand is this uh, QSP Locust. I've had QSP on the mind lately because uh, of all of the new penguins that have come out. And then uh, several knives by some of my favorite uh, people, uh, some of my trusted voices who have been having knives made by QSP. And so I'm loving everything that's coming out of there. But this is under their shingle here. Uh, you got titanium uh, sculpted pocket clip, uh, really excellent action, and just a stylish, beautiful knife. And yes, you can use the uh, hole to deploy the blade. Very useful blade too. I don't mean to just uh, linger on its looks and coolness, uh, but that blade, that Warncliffe blade, is uh, very useful. <coughs> Excuse me, with its straight edge and downward uh, tip. So, this is it. If you want to be a gentleman junkie, head over to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and uh, check it out. We got three tiers of support over there, and gentleman junkie is the top level of support, and uh, you get entered in to win a knife every month. Uh, one little quick note about Patreon. You can also um, sign up to pay annually. In, and in that case, you save 12%. 12%. Let me say that again. 
12%. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Well, I was just talking about Emerson whilst uh, discussing the peace arc in my pocket today. And very cool little news story in Knife Life News uh, with uh, featuring Emerson. They made a very special CQC7 that is the most famous of the uh, Emerson folding knives. Probably the first one that really put them on the public map. Uh, that is their uh, iconic chisel ground Tonto. So they made a, um, uh, a really beautiful one of a kind knife and sold it, uh, auctioned it off for St. Jude's Medical Center for Children. Uh, they call it the Galaxy 7. Uh, and this beautiful, beautiful knife has a G10 that you can see has uh, stars, a whole nebula theme. I think this this thing is beautiful. I think if they made these, they could sell an awful lot of them. But uh, so this is a one of a kind uh, knife and they they auctioned it off for thirty one hundred bucks. Uh, this went uh, th amazing. And and so this some lucky uh, winner, I feel like I don't know. I, I feel like I know several people uh, who this could be going to, but I don't know uh, for sure. Um, but I know one person in particular and it's not Edwin, uh, who I think might, who has a very special collection of CQC sevens. Uh, be cool if he ended up with this. Uh, but anyway, uh, just a beautiful thing and going to support a, a wonderful organization, uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, which goes, uh, which fights uh, pediatric cancer and, and other ailments. So uh, uh, that's a really nice thing for Emerson to do. Uh, glad to see that that kind of thing and that kind of give back. There seems to be an awful a lot of that in the knife world. Uh, and I'm not uh, pat my my back when I say knife world has a lot of great people in it. Uh, certainly, um, uh, Ernest Emerson is one of them, if not chief. All right. Uh, next up is uh, Tactile Knife Company. Now, when we were talking uh, with Matt from Tactile uh, recently, or, I mean, I'm sorry, Mike from uh, Tactical Manage uh, from Tactile Knife Company recently, we were talking about two very exciting collaborations that were in the offing. We saw the drop of the Christensen fixed blade Tonto, and now it's the Richard Rogers collaboration, the long awaited Maverick folder. And this thing is beautiful, uh, much uh, in the tradition of Richard Rogers designs. It is simple and sleek and beautiful and proportioned and all of that. And then, and then, Living up to the tactile name, you can see the beautiful micro milling uh, all across that uh, contoured handle. I mean, this thing looks really, really nice. And if you've uh, ever handled the rock wall uh, or the bear, you know the quality of their uh, construction. Look at that thing. That is beautiful. That pivot is really cool. And then you see this is their take on the axis lock. So excited to see how they do that. I'm sure they will crush it. Tactile Knife Company um, is a very young company, but born out of a an experienced pen manufacturing and designing company. So uh, they, they, they already have the chops to solve manufacturing problems. And uh, so I have no doubt that, that it's onward and upward. This thing is just tremendous though. And uh, maybe a, a good opportunity to get your hands on a Richard Rogers uh, knife. I mean, most certainly a great opportunity to get your hands on a Richard Rogers knife, because for me, there's no chance of getting a custom or anything like that. Uh, so really happy to see that out. And and one thing that makes me very happy is that that is a 3.6 inch blade. Uh, so that makes me happy because this is a knife uh, that is appealing, uh, truly appealing to me, but it, a little concerning because now it's sort of 
there will be that nag. Well, you know, it's a 3.6 inch blade, Bob. I mean, you should consider getting it. There will be that nagging voice. So thanks, Tactile Knife Company. And thanks, Richard, Richard Rogers. Maverick Folder on the way. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, two new knives from Off Grid and something that is very old on loan from a friend. And then we'll take a look at the fav my favorite knives from this year. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So this beautiful knife just arrived uh, this a uh, couple of days ago for me. Uh, this was sent to me by Carrie of Off Grid Knives. And this is the Backcountry Coyote V2. All right. So if you know anything about Off Grid Knives, he is constantly, uh, Carrie Orifice, the head head of off-grid knives is constantly refining the designs of his knives and they they go through iteration and reiteration and uh, we've seen him address pocket clip issues and by that i mean like the first time he heard someone mention flat screws he was embedding the he was embedding the clip and using flat screws and he just listens very uh intently to his uh to his customers and makes changes and this v2 is really incorporates some very nice changes to an already great knife. So on this knife, I'm not sure. Well, here, let me start with the sheath. Uh, first of all, they went from a pancake sheath, uh, which had a bit of a pancake sheath means that it's two pieces of Kydex uh, flattened with uh, flattened around the blade with grommets going all the way around. So it means that the sheath is going to have a larger footprint. Um, so they they turned this into a taco sheath. And as you may guess, taco sheath is one piece that is folded over like a taco uh, over the blade. And there's a seam on one side and, or a fold on one side and then a seam on the other. And then that's held uh, down with those grommets. So I'm happy that they went to this uh, more slender taco shape uh, because not only is it just less and makes it a more discreet package. But now it puts it in the realm of, if I remove this really excellent dangler, this is sort of a cold steel-esque dangler with the Velcro and the snap. And uh, But if I remove this, uh, this sheath will allow this to go into cons uh, in the waistband carry. It looks like it'd be at the very high end for me, uh, but it could be done. So I'm gonna try that out, haven't yet. But anyway, excellent sheath, really nice uh, upgrades on the sheath. Uh, that dangler, I, 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 uh, I feel like I, I'm, I'm very happy they went to this dangler. They had a sort of ad hoc uh, folded over piece of Kydex before that worked, but just, this is much better. Okay. And the blade. So like the other, like the original back country coyote and the, and the original back country coyote improved on the original back country, which was originally the blackout version. So they uh, went to lengths to contour the handle and they changed the um, texturing to this sort of elongated uh, hexagonal thing. But on this V2 version, they just slenderized the handle all together. They gave it really nice uh, contouring this way. So, so rounded this way and very, very nicely rounded on the edges. It's not, it doesn't feel anything like the last one, which uh, in terms of the squareness, the handle of the other one felt good, but it felt squared off. This just feels rounded off and way more comfortable. Um, though, you know, the other one wasn't uncomfortable, but just having this one, it's an, it's an improvement. And that's the point. And right here, you see these flared chamfers that come up from the bottom. These make a huge difference uh, all along your fingers, on the surface of your fingers. That's reaching around and grabbing there. And uh, and all in all, it's less, it's just a thinner package in the hand, which feels better to me. Um, my hands aren't giant. They're about medium, I'd say. 
Uh, sometimes I fit large and sometimes I, I don't. So I put them at medium. And for me, this feels better. Uh, my off-grid blackout, uh, which has an Anzo pattern and is more squared off and just a bigger, just feels bigger, is also comfortable, but by comparison, uh, not even in the same boat. So they really, really, I think they've kind of perfected this design at this point. And that's three iterations uh, so far that I've, that I have, that I've been keeping track of. And now that I have this new Coyote V2, I think I'm going to give my other Coyote to my brother because uh, he has the rapid fire, the folding version of this. And I think it'd be cool for him to have a matching pair. Uh, so really, really psyched. Thank you for this, uh, Carrie. And I, I say this a lot. This uh, is called the back country. So yeah, it is a, a camp and outdoor knife, but I also, uh, like to call it the back alley because to me it's kind of a tactical design with that recurve and that point um, you could see this being sharp and that would be even more tactical uh, so really great knife very psyched to have this uh, thank you and I'm, I'm i'm happy about the changes they made to that now uh, next from off grid knives also sent to me randomly was not expecting this but what a delight uh, the only change to this is cosmetic as far as I can tell, but it is the Raptor in coyote. And I love this little charmer. Uh, I will admit when I first saw it in its black version, I opened it up and I was like, Oh really? Really? Are we just like trying to be different now? Like, um, and then I started using it and realized that blade is awesome. It's a great blade. It's a great blade shape, and like most off-grid knives, it is wickedly thin behind the edge here, and this whole this whole blade is thin, so uh, on any sort of straight cut, it zips through, uh, but this, this hawk bill up front is so useful for pull cuts and all sorts of utility chores. Um, just a great little knife, and now it looks even better. I love the gray wash with the, uh, uh, with the tan. I just love that look. Reminds me of an Ohio field with a gray sky. Um, just do. I just love it. Uh, but this knife, the one drawback of this knife. Oh, here. See, deep carry pocket clip, recessed pocket clip, flat screws. Uh, the one issue with this, it's a little bit of a pocket hog. It's a little wide, you know. But, you know, if you like cleaver style blades, if you like cleaver style knives, this will not be an issue. Uh, for me, it took a little getting used to. I, I'm not such a cleaver guy so much. Um, but this kind of fits in that sort of uh, profile. So beautiful knife. Again, thank you, uh, Carrie, for sending this along. Um, and uh, happy to have a, a, another off-grid in the stable. Last up in the state of the collection, this is not mine. This is on loan to me, sort of. Well, it uh, this was uh, my buddy, Ian. He teaches me martial arts and he's just a friend who uh, brought this. Uh, he's like, yeah, can you sharpen a knife for me? I'm like, sure. And this is his Hawks Hellion by Topps Knives. And this is one of those, they're kind of cheesy sheaths and it is just busted, but it works. Um, and then look at this thing, man. He is just, so the answer is, the short answer is no, I'm not sharpening this. Uh <laughs> this thing is a beast and uh, really like a gnarly knife for survival. It's got this these big teeth here for making notches, for trapping. Uh, it's sharp all the way up here, or supposed to be. Uh, this is kind of like a bone-breaking kind of sharp here, and then uh, it gets progressively thinner. Um, you got five edges here. One, two, three, four, five. Pretty cool. Uh, this guy, Hawks, I don't remember who he is, I believe. Michael Hawk, I think. I, I think he was on the television show, the television show um, Dual Survival with that guy, Cody Lundin, the dude who didn't wear um, uh, shoes, fancied himself an aborigine. Uh, and everyone they ever paired him with wanted to kill him. Uh, but anyway, I think this is one of those guys. Uh, I remember when this came out, I was like, wow, this thing looks so badass. And, uh, you know, Ian uh, is a badass. So he went off and got this thing. And you can tell he has 
used it into the ground. So no, I am not going to sharpen this. No, I am not going to refurbish this. What I'm going to do, because this is missing some Chicago screws, and I'm going to send this to Tops for my buddy Ian and have them resharpen it. And whatever they can do to refurbish it, you know, I don't want to take the history out of it, but, you know, clean it up a little bit, put the new bolts in, that kind of thing. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. So what a what a really cool outdoor knife. And I want to I want to point out this uh, single finger partition here with this very high peak. Uh, whenever I draw knives and I I make that, I always think that will not be comfortable. It looks cool and it looks like almost like a uh, sub hilt, but it won't be comfortable. So I always kind of eliminate that from my drawings. But having this in hand, I am wrong. That feels so comfortable. I mean, you're set up for a saber grip. You're set up for any any type of grip with that, and it just feels feels great. So anyway, uh, very cool knife. I love uh, Tops knives, as you know, and uh, it was a thrill to get one uh, in here just just to check out. This is not one I would necessarily want in my collection, but a very cool one to to have and check out. <coughs> oh, you'll have to excuse me. All right now. Speaking of knives that I love, <laughs> uh, we're going to get into this. Uh, these are my 15 favorite knives uh, from this year. Now, from this year, some of them were released this year. All of them I got this year. Uh, I tried to keep this to, well, they're pretty much all knives you can get. Um, ex yeah, they're all knives you can get, and um, they're all excellent. And I fell in love with each one in turn. Uh, this year. Um, okay, first up, the Resco Instruments Gooseworks Mekong Delta Combat Folder. And let me just say, these are in no particular order. These are, except that the fixed blades come at the end. <laughs> so I guess maybe they are. Uh, but they're not rank ordered in terms of favorite. Uh, but I found myself carrying this by default many, many days since I got it. Uh, just the perfect sort of hard use uh, sleek American styled um, knife, sort of in the tradition of Chris Reeve, sort of in the tradition of Spartan blades and Strider and Hinderer knives. It has this just tough look, simple, stoic, tough look and build. And it's washers and, and 20 CV and blasted titanium that feels good to the hand and shows lots of snail trails. I love everything about this knife. Um, it's made by Best Tech, and I love Best Tech. I remember when I first got this, I thought it was, I was convinced it was American made by, by a couple of uh, uh, barefoot um, frogmen in their, in their North Carolina basements. Uh, but it was designed by those guys and made by some awesome knife makers called Best Tech. So uh, I absolutely love this knife. I love this action. It's got that hydraulic sort of sebenzoid action is super sharp uh but does have uh now you, you can also get this hollow ground this has a bit of an oblique saber grind uh but is very sharp kind of in the way microtechs are they feel like the ang the the geometry is oblique but they're just wicked sharp that's kind of like this uh great knife great great knife very very happy to have this one and uh been one of my favorites if not my favorite folder this year okay next up uh i said all the fixed blades were at the end i lied uh but this one is a fixed blade and this has gotten the most use out of everything on this table uh this is the vostied morgan it's a beautiful eight inch chef's knife sent to me by vostied knives they asked if i wanted to check out one of their kitchen knives. And I said, yeah, uh, I sure do. Because I had been seeing a lot of videos of their folders uh, by uh, people I considered trusted voices and they were loving the folders. So I, I wanted to see uh, what the what the chef's knife was like. And this thing is awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so this sits with my, I have uh, I have the um, Wusthof Tri, I have a, a very nice Wusthof Trident. I have a couple of Henkels, and then I have the Kai, um, oh, what are those called? The, the 
uh the the kai the kai series uh they escape me now so i have some good uh production um uh kitchen knives this came in and kind of blew them away I, I i'm i'm really really in love with this knife i'm not in love with the pommel that's the only thing i'm not in love with but at this point it looks like a 50s car to me so i don't care the handle which i thought i would not like with these angular facets is incredibly comfortable for both my hand and my wife's hand she loves this knife also uh very very thin uh yet nicely crowned spine um and it's vg10 san mai so vg10 is the cutting steel i think this is a 420j jacket i think and um it's just it's wickedly sharp it keeps a really good edge i think that vg10 cutting edge is uh you know in our realm of pocket knives and such and 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 these edc knives it's not much or, or it's you know it's okay it's fair to midland but uh, i think in the kitchen realm it's really good because <laughs> it's been great in this uh in this context uh lots of stropping i keep a strop in the kitchen uh and every once in a while uh, i have used a steel if sometimes when you drag the edge across a strop it'll leave um lines and you can tell that there's some jaggedness going on on the edge so i'll knock it knock it off with a with the steel and then strop it um but this this has already been used a lot more than anything else on the table and has uh, prepared a lot of tasty and then some pretty lackluster meals also uh i am i i do a lot of the cooking during the week and uh and sometimes i run out of imagination um, my wife's a killer cook and she does all this awesome stuff during the weekend. I keep it running during the week. She keeps it uh, fun and interesting during the weekend. Anyway, how do we do that? We do it with a Vosteed Morgan, um, among other knives, but I really dig this knife. And if you're looking for us a, uh, uh, an affordable kitchen knife, look no further, I would say. All right, next up, uh, Concept. Man, they have just been knocking it out of the park uh sorry for the sports analogy there ladies and gentlemen uh but i i love concept knives i have a small uh sub collection of them uh, only like four or five or three or four or something like that i think i sold one recently um but i love the way they're made and and the designers that they collaborate with this is a k max rom design i really dig k max rom designs as jonathan renaudin from france been following him and his designs and his custom work on Instagram for years and then was very excited to see him doing some collaborations first with Kaiser and then with Concept. Uh, the Preta 2, Preta 2 means ready for anything. Uh, this one comes in um, clip point fullered like this or uh, or uh, Tonto that looks a lot like the Umnum Zan Tonto uh, and with a fuller both with the micarta uh, in black or tan, or you can get it all as a frame lock. I had that and sold uh, sold that off um, to a good friend of the show. Um, so this one is the one that I, I kept, even though that other titanium one was just so perfect, so perfect, but I was just not carrying it. So I decided I had to keep one, and it was this one. This is the one I kept popping in my pocket. So um, love the work over a concept, and then love the work of Jonathan Renaudin. All right, next up, uh, I have got a got a good number of these. This was a hard one to choose from, but uh, this is a shining beacon to me in the Jack Wolf uh, Jack Wolf knives uh, lineup. That's the Midnight Jack, one of my favorite knives this year um, at all. Was this Midnight Jack? Now, uh, the Jack Wolf knives came out this year, and I got each one of them. Thank you, Ben Belkin. He's the he sent them to me. Um, and I'm ever grateful. Um, and they are amazing to, to a knife. They are amazing. Uh, not just in how beautifully built they are with these modern materials and really, really impeccable builds. I mean, really impeccable, uh, but also the design tweaks to, to very, um, common, uh, old patterns. And this one is his take on the Barlow and He's got that nice big one third length uh, bolster. That's what a Barlow, a large Barlow bolster 
is one third the length of the handle. So he's got that. He's got that triple fluting in the in the bolster there, and this really nice coffin shaped handle. It reminds me of the handle of some old Bowies uh, with that coffin shape, and then the downward raked um, blade uh, cutting edge. Look, see that? Look at that. I love that of this of this sheep's foot blade. So you not only have the tip down low, you have it even lower, just kind of like the Venom Jack, as I was talking about before. Uh, the straight edge does not come straight off the bottom of the handle. It comes down at an angle. So it accelerates your cuts, puts your point where you really need it to be for all sorts of precision uh, cutting and that kind of thing. And this just this knife really, really impressed me. And And they're all very thin. They're all very thinly hollow ground full hollow ground except for the Benny's clip and but this one to me just felt thinner still feels thinner feels like the thinnest so uh that I've felt so far um so in love with this knife love the green micarta next to the gray just a handsome handsome knife and uh yeah I do keep it in its um in its case leather case so it doesn't uh, get messed up but listen to the walk and talk Really outstanding action and walk and talk and fit and finish. Okay, next up. Oh, this is looking like the off-grid show because there's another off-grid in my list. Hey, here's the Stinger XL. Uh, first of all, we see that color combo that I really love that we saw in the last two knives. Uh, but this one just takes the cake. This one took the cake this year. I love the design. This is made uh, not by Best Tech, but by their um, Taiwan manufacturer. Uh, and they do really incredible work. Um, so the thing I really like about the Stinger XL, besides the promising name, which leads me to believe there will be an EDC version of it, a smaller version. Uh, but I love the I love the four inch blade, that broad bayonet style blade and the handle. The ergonomics on this is way more comfortable than any other um folder by off-grid knives here to four uh, which are usually pretty squared off and uh, but they're squared off but they're comfortable because of the contours uh, this one is comfortable from the contour sure but also and by contour I, i'm sorry i meant the outer profile the shape of the handle but this one also has the surface contouring and the wide chamfering and it just makes this knife so comfortable to hold so this thing got a lot of pocket time uh, this year. Plus, it's just so formidable. It's got a 154CM steel by Crucible. Not to be mistaken with CPM 154. Um, just really sharp. Now, I was talking before about how off-grid knives are all really thin behind the edge. This one is too, but it has a bit more of an oblique approach on the bevel just due to where that uh, center ridge line is just a very very nice uh looking knife and to me it has a bit of a militaristic uh feel to it it's got it, it's evocative of the m3 uh trench knife and and some bayonets and i just love it also a nice little lux edition he's now starting to put tab fillers in some of his knives there so that uh void is no longer you know, you're not feeling that great action, great knife, great cutter. And uh, man, she's a looker. OK, next up in this cavalcade of awesome knives from this past year, the Orion Scorpion Scorpio. I'm sorry, Scorpio. Uh, this thing has been an emotional support knife ever since I got it. <laughs> it's this little, little stylish clip point. Uh, that is just so fun to play with. Um, forgive me while I do so right here. Um, but uh, like the Orion um, Solaris, this has, well, the very same shaped handle as the Solaris, but it's smaller. Uh, this area here is exactly like the Solaris with all of the same layout and uh, uh, setup so that you get really great flipping and really great lockup and uh, all the geometry and um, uh, physics and leverage are just so. 
So that, that gets uh, shared between the two models. But this one, again, is smaller, and it features this gorgeous 14C 28N, very unique clip point blade. It's got a crowned spine with a really nice fuller and that really cool run of jimping on the clip. And I was thinking it was just there for style and coolness. Uh, and when I mentioned it uh, to Mike, uh, Michael uh, during one of our interviews, he was saying, oh, no, no, I, I'm sorry, David. I'm getting everyone's names mixed up. David Cam. He said, that is so that you can uh, determine how deep you want the blade to go into a, a package. Say you're cutting the seam of tape and there's a pillow inside. You don't want all that blade going in. So you can you can choke up with your finger right on that jimping, find your exact spot, and stay right there. And I thought that was a brilliant little use of that. But really, it's just a charming, fun little EDC knife. And then like every small knife that I love and that I like, it maintains the width of a normally sized knife. It's not thin on all dimensions. It's still thick. And when it's thick and small, you can have a three finger knife uh, really work out just fine because you've got that width, you got something to hold on to. Also to uh, sculpted titanium pocket clip on this beauty. And then like like uh, the, the Orion Solaris, uh, David Cam promises that this knife will also uh, have a bunch of modular pieces that you can get uh, to trick it out, uh, which I love. Who doesn't love that? All right, next up is another stylish and beautiful clip point. This one just won my heart for its sheer beauty. Uh, and then once I got it, I realized what a great knife it is. This is the Petrified Fish Victor. Now, I saw this while I was uh, surfing for surfing I, I haven't used that term in like 15 years well, i was I, I was looking for a uh beluga so sorry guys i was looking for a beluga and i came across this and that blade shape intoxicated me immediately uh just a perfect bowie shape i talk about that uh different some of the different perfectly shaped bowies like the buck 110 uh like the uh um uh, the recon one, uh, there are, there are many, uh, the, the buck one nineteen has a beautiful classic. The K bar is a classic Bowie shape. This one right here, uh, on the petrified fish Victor is just perfect and beautiful. So that's why I got it literally just to have a petrified fish and to have this to look at, <laughs> but I've been carrying this one a bit recently. Again, uh, I got this quite a while ago and, uh, I, I'm just loving it. I love using this knife. The one thing I'm not crazy about is that shiny pocket clip, but it's not not a huge deal. Not a huge deal at all. Uh, but I do like gazing upon the beauty of this. I also really like this bright blue uh, denim micarta. It just really, really brightens brightens my spirit. Also, it's taking on my personal funk signature beautifully. And uh, you can see that when you look at the clip there. Oh, yeah. You're wondering what that notch is? Yep, you guessed it. For Spidey flicking, they think of everything. Uh, so accommodating are the people at Petrified Fish. So really cool design. Also comes in green micarta with a black blade. That was a hard decision. Not a hard decision was to get my card on this next one because... To me, it was my favorite. Uh, that is the Tempest Knives um, Pinion. Now, this is like some of these knives, like this one. Uh, I, I I count uh, JC of the Knives Fast Channel among my uh, among my friends. He is a trusted voice out there and uh, just a very cool guy. The Knives Fast Channel and his Tempest Knives company. Well, this is the first uh, run. He's got he's got a new knife coming out. Uh, shortly that he's been showing the prototypes off of but this one i i just i really like this knife and i i the one that he came out with before this the mach 51 to my eye looks better but for some reason i like this better i just like this knife a lot it, it this is the this is what the 
940, <laughs> the Benchmade 940 was supposed to be for me. Uh, it's got that same sh similar shaped blade, at least in terms of the cutting edge and the, and the tip. Um, but it works so much better. As you know, I'm not a huge fan of the 940. Um, and, but this, the, the, the part of the 940 that appeals to me, this takes, uh, but, but delivers so much more for me. So this will do it. Uh, very nicely contoured handle is comfortable, very ergonomic, great design. Uh, for a new designer, I mean, great design period, but Casey is a new designer. He he did not uh, spend the last 20 years cultivating his design. He's been doing other things, having a family, having a career in, in a different line of work. So um, very cool for him to come out with something new, but different, same, but different. You know, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a liner lock, uh, 14C28 and liner lock with micarta. You've seen a million of those, but this one is totally unique, and uh, I love it. I love carrying this and using it. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend uh, you get it. I know that he keeps these on stock at TempestKnives.com. I think he has, um, I think he has Jade G10 right now uh, among the the micarta and the other color G10s, uh, which is somewhat new, uh, but also made by uh, QSP and just buttery, buttery smooth. A uh, great, great knife. Did I speak out of turn? Kubi. I think Kubi made this. Not QSP. Kubi. Uh, beautiful knife, nonetheless, is the Tempest Knives Pinion. Next up, this is uh, this is one that uh, was sent to me to check out by uh, Dirk Pinkerton. This is the Asymmetrical Contact. Asymmetrical, uh, the mid-range company from Beyond EDC. And Dirk Pinkerton, you know him, the famed and prolific designer and knife maker. Um, this looks like a Pinkerton all day long. This is like such a perfect example of his work and the perfect example of my favorite shaped Warncliffe. Uh, that angle up front is perfect. This tip angle, I'm not sure what it is. I, I always talk about it and then forget to measure it. But that angle is perfect. <clears throat> the widening of the blade towards the Ricasso is awesome. Uh, and everything else about this knife, the handle uh, sets it up for all sorts of use, though it's very neutral. Uh, it's great as a um, in, in all grips, uh, this sort of saber grip. It's fine. It's good. Fine. Uh, this accelerates at this choked up Filipino grip. Um, reverse grip is awesome. Pick call style is awesome. Uh, so this is a great knife for flexing. And and uh, actually, he cor uh, Dirk corroborated this when I mentioned. To me, this knife is a perfect flex between utility slash EDC and really set up well for tactical. And, and he said that was his aim in creating this. Um, and, well, I'd say he accomplished it. Uh, because if you look at it, it looks like a civilized, it doesn't look too gnarly, it doesn't look too scary to me. Uh, it does look utilitarian with that blade shape and you can tell it's a nice thing just by looking at it. You don't have to be a, <laughs> you don't have to be a knife maker to know that this is a nice thing. Um, and so, uh, boy, I lost track there. My, my mind went somewhere totally different. Uh, but in any case, one of my favorites this year and, and Dirk's a smart man. He sent this to me knowing I'd fall in love with it. Hey, you want to check it out? I ended up, uh, you know, walking off with the prize. I love this thing. And uh, it is also a rare one in my collection uh, to get front right pocket uh, access because it is only 3.3 inches in blade length. Okay, next up, the last of the, of the folders this year uh, that really blew me away that, um, yeah just changed my perspective ever so slightly, uh, is the beautiful Finch Knives Buffalo Tooth. Just a gorgeous knife. You remember hearing me go on and on about this knife, about the wood, about how it's a gentleman's knife, about how this changed my mind about what a gentleman's knife needs to be. No, it does not need to be thin and slender. Uh, no, it does not need to be uh, shallow and tiny and svelte this is a big knife it is a broad knife it's not too thick this way but it is a broad knife and yet 
super capable, super comfortable, and just looks classy as hell sitting next to your watch and your wallet, your leather wallet, and uh, and your flashlight and whatever other, other EDC stuff you carry, you nerd. Uh, this thing looks so good and gentlemanly next to it. Uh, makes me feel so good. Uh, you've got your fluted bolsters, like on a nice traditional knife. Excuse all the sniffling. Uh, you've got coca bolo wood, some of my absolute favorite. And the contrast between the uh, titanium bolsters. Yes, this is titanium, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the contrast between the titanium and the wood to me is just gorgeous. This comes in another setup with uh, Mother of Pearl. or. Uh, not Mother of Pearl. What's that other stuff called? Uh, abalone. And then it also comes with jigged titanium. And in any other circumstance, you'll hear me say jigged titanium all day long. And uh, maybe even abalone just for its fanciness. But in this case, uh, nothing beats this gorgeous coca bolo uh, wood. Uh, a very, very thin, broad, high uh, saber grind. Or not saber grind, but flat grind. This thing uh, prepared a salad the first day I got it and did a great job. You know, of course, it's a little short for uh, prep work. But other than that, great, great blade geometry for, for slicing and cutting uh, all manner of vegetables and such. So I love this knife. Big, big one for me this year. The Finch Knives Buffalo Tooth. Next up was this strange thing it's not a strange thing it's a bowie knife and you know i love bowie knives but this launched me on this feverish bowie knife uh thing i've been on for a little while uh this is the kudaman uh bowie i don't think it has really any other name kudaman is a company out of spain and i realized geez i have no spanish knives i need to get some spanish knives in my life beautiful black leather uh scabbard here with the red stitching is so appealing to me uh there's their embossed logo it's an elephant, but here's the star. It's beautiful, kind of very classic looking Bowie knife and Bowie blade there. Uh, it, it is hollow ground. It's molybdenum vanadium steel. As you'll see a lot of uh, Spanish knives, whether it's Kudaman or um, Ator or uh, what's that other one? Joker. Uh, there are a couple of others. Uh, they all use this uh, molybdenum vanadium steel, and it's really good. Uh, I have thumped a little bit on this, but I also watched Legion Tactical's uh, video with him just totally thumping on this. As a matter of fact, uh, Scruggs over there is the is the one who introduced me to this knife, and I kept going back to that video, and eventually I just found it and bought it. Actually, buying this uh, from Chicago Knife Works is what introduced me to Chicago Knife Works. They have awesome prices on fixed blades. I got to say, check them out. Check out Chicago Knife Works. Great, great selection of cold steels also, and just very good prices. That's where I've been getting uh, some of my big knives lately because that's where I've been getting the best prices. But this one, uh, you don't see too often, so I'm really happy to have it in my collection. I love that it's sort of a plain Jane Bowie. I do love the shape. I love the slightly curved clip and the hollow grinds here, that straight steel, uh, even quillioned uh, guard, and then the grippy micarta handle, which is, it, it's actually pretty smooth uh, and, and pretty neutrally shaped. That's another aspect of this that I really like. It kind of reminds me a little bit of some of the German Bowie knives you'll see with stag handles. Uh, I'd love to let this collection just go crazy uh, with the Bowies, and but I should be I should be tempered. But anyway, this is one of them. Uh, this this had me going for a good chunk of the year. This is the Kudaman uh, Bowie knife. All right, next up uh, by one of my favorite knife designers uh, for fixed blade, crazy tactical designs is Lacey Zabo. And this is from Topps Knives. Love Topps Knives. This is the Zabo Express. Uh, I have one other Topps Knives uh, knife designed by Lacey Zabo, and that is the Felony Stop, another double-edged wonder. 
This is a one, two, three, four, five. This is a uh, five and three quarters inch or six inch, depending on where you're measuring from, fighter. This is a double edge. They make a single edge version. Uh, no, it's not a dagger. It's a fighter. That's what I. That's what I contest. If you look at it upside down like this, you'll see where the apex of the bellies are on both sides. They're uneven. Uh, set up much more like a fighter than a dagger. But who cares? Um, I just like harping on that for some reason. Uh, the top bevel, like on a fighter, is smaller than the than the main bevel, just by not too much. Uh, but it, that's not really changing the angle of approach enough to make that so that it's not still wickedly nastily sharp. You've got a pretty neutral handle, especially for a, a Zabo design. A lot of his things are very choiled and kind of strong arm your hand into a certain position or i shouldn't say strong arm but like you really need to hold the knife in a certain way to make it work this you could uh well it's double edge you don't need to do too much uh in the way of changing your grip but excellent in reverse excellent in this uh fencing grip or i'm sorry saber grip and then of course a hammer grip would be fine and and dandy just be careful when you do that hammer grip my proclivity is always to put my thumb up on the spine and, and turn that hammer grip into a Filipino grip. But in this case, that would spell disaster. Luckily, this, this little thumb ramp here comes up high enough that before you would really press down, you'd be like, what's this doing? Oh, yeah. Wrong knife. Canvas micarta handles, very nicely textured. Uh, just an awesome knife. Uh, this one's been doing uh, next to the bed duty recently. Okay. Uh, Next up is the Rough Rider Bowie, the Black Mule Bowie. Uh, this thing just amazed me with its 3CR13 MOV blade steel. I was expecting that to be uh, total garbage, uh, just because that's how I'm pre-programmed. Uh, but it has been awesome. I mean, better than 8CR, I would venture to say. I think that uh, 3CR13 is is a very good outdoor steel outdoor budget steel because i've been seeing it on let, let's see the cold steel knives that they are now selling at walmart that are marketed as outdoor knives jimmy slash uh beat the crap out of some and they just kept coming back for more and those are three cr this is three cr and i know that there are some others uh so i just think that it's a even though it sounds close to eight cr and we like to rag on that i just think that it's a different sort of a different bird um a very tough bird because this one I got and for 25 bucks, I had no bones taking out to the stump of truth and banging on it and, and uh, doing a lot of batoning and just making kindling and stuff like that. And it maintained a razor sharp edge. I mean, I cut paper before going out, cut paper when I came in and uh, you know, I'm not Paul Bunyan. I wasn't cutting all day, but I did a good amount uh, expecting this to come back in uh, all dull and it wasn't it was awesome so i really like this knife a lot if you have a hankering for a bowie and you don't want to spend too much money 25 bucks to get you something very very serviceable and plus it's got the same profile as the shining mountain bowie um made famous uh, by mike stewart who designed it but also made famous in the old uh inglorious bastards by the way, this rubber handle has loosened up, though I know it's a, a full tang, comes all the way down. I'm going to remove this and put a put an elk horn on there when I get it and kind of uh, make this be a project knife. Make this be a project knife? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if uh, I don't know if that was correct. <laughs> make this be a project knife. Okay, uh, second to last is not an an. Uh, a new knife, but it is coming in a new steel. And I finally, finally got it this year. The Natchez Bowie by Cold Steel. Love this fighting Bowie. This is a Musso style fighting Bowie. Um, and there are no two bones about it. This has a cable tang, meaning that the stick tang from the knife blade comes to about here. It's uh, welded onto a cable, a metal cable, that welds onto a screw. Uh, the screw is screwed down here with the pommel and it's all held together like that. When I first saw that, I was like, what? They also do that with the um, Laredo boy. I'm like, what is it? Like, like, 
if you're going to be cheap about it, why go through so much effort? And then I realized if they weren't, they're not being cheap about it. This is a, this and the Laredo Bowie are, um, fighting knives. They're, they're meant to be fighting Bowies. They're not really meant to be taken to the campsite and batoned with, of course you could and all that, but, uh, these are meant more as fighters. And, and so as such, uh, a lot goes into the balance, the weight, the feel, and all of that. Plus that cable tang in there, uh, is a shock absorber. It basically, uh, reduces, you hit something hard, it reduces the shock that travels down through the handle. So kind of a cool design, uh, shocking and weird to me at first, uh, but, but interesting nonetheless. This knife is just a fighting masterpiece, uh, about 12-inch blade and a uh, nearly sharpened swedge. I mean, it just comes to a zero edge, so it's, it's pretty sharp. Uh, with a back cut motion, uh, you will do plenty, plenty of damage. Uh, very, very nice. This is the one in the 4034 stainless steel. That's their cheap steel. Uh, but knowing cold steel, they are so incredible with their heat treats. And knowing what I use my knives for, which is pretty much what you're looking at right now, uh, I know I don't need to spend another 250 bucks to get 3V uh, for this knife. 3V for this knife seems weird with a cable tang because 3V makes you feel like, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to hit this. I want to chop with this. But that's not what this is. This is a fighting knife. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a conversation for another time. All right. Last up in my favorite knives of this year, you've seen it already tonight, so I won't wax on too long about it, but it's the hog tooth knives ruffian, uh, this beautiful gents. I'm, I'm calling this a gentleman's Bowie. You know, it's small. I can carry it and I'm a gentleman. Therefore, it is a gentleman's bowie. Uh, what I love about this knife, uh, besides everything else that I talked about before, is that I can carry it on a daily basis. I've bonded with it. I've used it a little bit, not too much, uh, frankly, yet. Uh, but I can have it on me all the time. It's just the perfect design. Um, it fits perfectly on my waist. It gives me uh, a nice long blade without being too crazy. Uh, without having too much sheath in the in the waistband so this one really does take the cake i love this knife and uh, i said i wasn't rank ordering them but since this was my birthday custom knife and another one from from matt at hogtooth maybe i'll call this the favorite all right let me know what you got this year and what your favorites were uh let me know the top three drop them in the comments below i'd love to know and uh, don't be shy. If you had fixed blades, put them in there. If you got a sword or a mace or a tomahawk or some sort of knife adjacent implement, put that down there too. You know, I'm going to love that. All right. Please join us tomorrow night for a Thursday night knives right here at 10 PM Eastern standard time. Uh, that's live also on Facebook and Twitch and uh, join us on Sunday for a, an awesome conversation with Jimmy slash, you know, him, uh, from YouTube. And uh, what a great guy. We have an awesome conversation yet again. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.